Stayallday.com. Stay tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and offensively, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. This is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques that we call work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is, we're going to go over some inescapable truths, inescapable truths just about life in general that I'm going to go over here today. I, there was no other category that I wanted to put these in, and this will probably be the beginning of a, uh, probably an ongoing series, but this is just going to be one isolated episode here today. But before we get into it, let me remind you of two things. Number one, once we start sending them again, my daily and Monday motivation text guaranteed to have you focus sharp and on point to start your day and your week. You can get those by being a member of my text community. Once we start sending the messages out again, as I said, my number to text me at 305-384-6894. Just send a message to that number right now. Once we start sending the messages again, everybody who's in the text community, you'll be automatically getting them as soon as they start uh, being activated. Secondly, work on your game university. That's the place where I do all my coaching. If you would like to be a uh, coaching student of mine. If you like to work with me directly and have direct access to me to share your challenges, to network and build with other entrepreneurs who are on the same path and same journey as you. You like to have access to our training materials in the university. You like to be in our uh, community where you can engage with not only me, but with others in our groups to make sure you have some ongoing support and a place to go when you have challenges and questions. And you want to get our physical mailings that we send every month the black book and the bulletproof bulletin those literally come to your physical mailbox go to work on your game university.com you can read about everything that i just told you and you can sign up and get into the university right there on the spot uh, with that out the way let's get into this topic here of inescapable truths now again i thought about a few of these for this episode and as i said i anticipate there will be future installments into this series unless they fit unless these topics fit into other categories because basically everything I tell you here on the show is an inescapable truth but these are ones that I otherwise didn't categorize and again this will probably be ongoing we're just starting with one here today now these are all truths that exist in life and apply to everyone so that's why they're not I'm not putting them in it, into any particular category and no matter how hard you try you cannot escape the reality of these truths and once I get to explain them you'll understand what I mean and you'll be able to uh, easily consider how they apply directly in your life and to you personally. Number one topic, once again, is inescapable truths. You cannot get without giving. That right? is impossible. This is one of the laws of the universe that you cannot get without giving. Now, sometimes you may get, receive before you give. Sometimes you give before you get or receive. But everything will balance itself out when it comes to your getting and your giving. Again, this is a general law of the universe. Many, many people commonly refer to this law as the law of karma, but it's the, exact, it's the exact same thing. So some of you may call this karma. Often when people are talking about karma, they're talking about good luck and bad luck or good things happening and bad things happening, <clears throat> excuse me, or good and bad things you have done. And at the same time, this also applies to what you give and what you receive, whether you call them good, bad, whatever label you want to put on them, it applies the exact same way. What goes around comes around. All of us have heard that phrase. Or these all mean the same thing. So whatever you put out there, you're going to eventually get back, sometimes in a different form, oftentimes multiply it from how it was sent out. So if you want to receive more in your own life of things that you want, you should be looking for ways to give to others. All right, that's what you should look for. You want to receive Look for ways to get. You help others. When you help others get what they want, you will get everything that you want. And this all applies when it comes to things that, again, that you want just as easily as applies to things that you don't want. Right, so if you put out things, if you put things that other people don't want into their lives, in other words, you are sending negative energy or negative outcomes to other people, then that same thing is going to come back to you in some way. Sometimes, again, multiply it, sometimes in a different form. So be careful what you're putting out into the universe, because eventually it will find its way back to you again, not always in the same way in which it came out. So always beware of the easy win or the free lunch, the success that you didn't have to do any work for. You didn't have to put anything in for 
or the free months. Receiving something without giving anything and with the expectation that you're not going to have to give anything, that is impossible. Uh, it's one of the first laws of economics. I would say the first law of economics would be supply and demand. Sometimes I've used this other one as the first law. I'll say that I'll just call this the second law. Colloquially, we will call it the second law will be there is no such thing as a free lunch. You can't get anything for free. Anything that you receive that appears to be free is being paid for, whether somebody else is doing the payment or you are making a payment and you're not even aware that you're paying for it or you're going to pay for it later. For example, social media, most people see social media as free and technically it is free because you don't have to pay money in order to use social media. However, it does come at a very high cost. And let me explain to you the cost. I talked about this in episode 1690, by the way. The first cost is that it is draining and monetizing your attention and your time, and you are not partaking in this transaction. In other words, social media uses your time and your attention, and it charges money for it, even though you are not seeing any of those dollars. It's taking your time and making other people pay for it. How does that even make sense? Well, it does, because that's exactly what social media is doing. So there is a cost. You just don't even realize that cost. That's one cost. The other cost is on the back end. This is a cost that many of us have not realized yet, but we all will come to realize this cost, especially those of us who use social media consistently, is that we've given up our privacy for our enjoyment of social media. And at some point in the future, we're going to realize the cost of giving up that privacy. Right now, in the current world that we live in, as of this recording, we don't really, really bear, we don't really feel the brunt of that cost. But I am predicting as a social media user myself, in the future, we're going to feel the brunt of that cost of giving up our privacy in order to use these quote unquote free applications. So again, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Anything you think you're getting for free, you are paying for it. You just don't realize, you may not realize in the moment how you're paying for it, but you are paying for it. Moving on. And we're still on point number one here. Nothing in life that is worth having is going to come easy. Nothing in life worth having comes easy. Anything that is handed to you at no cost whatsoever, again, there is always a cost. There's always a cost. It's again, just sometimes they're hidden. Costs that you don't see until it's too late for you to change your mind about accepting the thing that you got. In other words, you have no choice but to pay the cost, whatever the fee may be. As I just told you, social media appears to be free. You're paying with your most valuable resources, being your time and attention. And the things in life <clears throat> that are financially expensive things that cost you a lot of money, they are usually the cheapest things that you can buy. The things that cost you the most money are usually the cheapest things that you can buy. Now, how is that? How does that make sense? It's because when you are paying full price, often mean, it often means there are no additional costs that you'll have to pay that you are unaware of. That's what happens when you pay full price for things. When you pay the full price of what something is worth to you, then there are no hidden costs that you have to pay on the back end. But when you buy something that is cheap and you know you're not paying full price and you bought it because it's not full price, understand that the additional costs still exist and they will be extracted from you often in ways that are uncomfortable for you. That's what happens when you buy cheap things. So, for example, if you buy a cheap toy, you buy a cheap uh, bicycle for your kid. Just yesterday, I was uh, taking my son on a walk and he's not old enough to ride a bike or use things with wheels just yet. There were some kids riding on skates and I seen a kid riding on a bike with training wheels. If you buy your kid a cheap bicycle, then what's going to happen is even though you saved 50 bucks by buying a $50 bike instead of the $100 bike, the challenge is the $50 bike is so cheaply made and the parts are so cheap and it's just put together so cheaply. What's going to happen is one of the wheels are going to break and the handlebars are going to break and you got to replace the chain and you got to replace the seat. And then some of the spokes are not working anymore and it starts to rust out. And all the money that you spend replacing the parts on the cheap bike, you would have saved money had you just bought the $100 bike from the beginning. Because the $100 bike, none of those parts would break or malfunction or need to be replaced. So you actually end up spending $300 on the cheap bike with all the replacement pieces. And you only had to spend $100 on the $100 bike, the expensive, more expensive bike. See, this is what I mean. And swap out the concept of a bicycle, everybody. And think about the things that you're investing in. Think about the clothes that you invest in, like the actual clothing that you wear. Think about the food that you buy. Think about the personal and professional development that you invest in. When you only go after the cheap things, again, there will be additional costs that you don't even see at the beginning because all you're thinking about is saving a couple of dollars. But had you just made the full investment up front, you would have saved more money in the long run. The biggest challenge with all of this is that 
often as human beings, we are too short sighted. We are only thinking about what is immediately in front of us instead of thinking about the long term ramifications of the decisions that we make. So that's why I'm making this point to help you think more about the future than just thinking about the present moment. So when you find yourself being financially cheap, you are actually costing yourself even more money than you think you're saving. So everybody get that? Is everybody understanding this? So how many of you ever gone to a store and bought something cheap just because it was cheap? And you, you bought the cheap thing because it lets you save a couple of hours. You notice how that thing ended up, as I explained to you in my example there with the bicycle, costing you more money in the long run than if you had just bought the higher priced thing from the beginning. Again, this is how being cheap costs you money. Moving on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, are some inescapable truths about life. Number two, biology demands that the mind and body get rest. This is demanded by biology. All right. The mind and body must be rested at consistent points in life. It is impossible to live as a human being without giving your mind and body rest. If you try to fight against this, then your mind and body will fight back against you and you will lose. You must give them rest. There is a limit to how much hard work any person can do before their mind or body needs a recovery period. Now, this is not to say that you should not work hard. I mean, after all, my whole philosophy here is called work on your game. So I'm not telling you not to work hard. It is to say that the solution to your problems oftentimes is not to double down and triple down on effort. There is a sweet spot when it comes to hard work for all of us. All of us have a sweet spot of hard work, meaning the point at which we can, the maximum amount of effort that we can give, where it also makes the most sense when it comes to the ROI that that effort produces. It's similar to a supply and demand curve that you would see any of you who know anything about economics. There's a sweet spot there when it comes to effort and ROI. So the same way you have supply and demand, you got effort and ROI. Your job is to find that sweet spot. The maximum amount of hard work that produces the maximum amount of ROI. Any additional hard work you do past that, now you're going to start to experience what we call the law of diminishing returns. And there are times when this makes sense. For example, in a professional sports world, for example, you can get to be in the top 80th percentile of pro athletes in any sport with a certain amount of effort. Now, that last 20 percent to get to the 99th percentile or the 100th percentile and be the best, that requires you to go into that law of diminishing returns space because you can get everybody knows the 80 20 rule, right? 80 percent of our results come from 20 percent of our input. So anyway, with the right 20 percent of inputs, you can get to being about the 80th percentile in a sport with the 20 percent of effort. Now, that's not that much effort. You can get to the top 80th percentile. But to get from that 80th up to, again, playing around near that 100 level, this is where the pros are. You have to do additional hard work that, again, the returns are not as strong as you go past 80 percent. But you must go there. You must do that in order to be competing with the people who are at the top level, because that's what the, all the rest of them are doing. So this is a point in life in which you should actually follow what a whole bunch of other people are doing if you're going to surpass them. There's no way you're going to get to the pro level just doing 20 percent, at least 80 percent results because you're not going to be good enough. Period. You're just not going to have the skill. But all the other people, they're doing the extra stuff that gets you that little bit of difference. So when you're talking about a pro athlete who's a, a pro athlete who's really good. You think about somebody like uh, Tom Brady, for example. I remember I was watching this documentary on Facebook. He had called Tom versus Time. And it was an off season. I think the Patriots had just won a Super Bowl. It was one of the last couple of Super Bowls he won playing for the New England Patriots. And Tom Brady had flown to California, where he's actually from, and he had hired this quarterback coach who was helping. He was coaching Tom on his throwing technique. And this is after he had won like five or six Super Bowls at this point. And I've pointed this little anecdote out before just to show you this is the little details that the people who are the best at what they do are still investing in. So even though he had just won another Super Bowl, he's one of the best players recognized one of the best players in the history of the game, he was still investing in himself after all that time when he, of all people, could have afforded to rest on his laurels and not do anything. And nobody could have complained to him about it. He continued to invest in himself. And here's the point. He just won another Super Bowl. So Tom Brady was already in the top 99th percentile of quarterbacks in the entire world. Yet he was still hiring a coach in order to get that one little percentage of a percentage point that could help him get better. That one little bit that he could get better at because he's pretty close to 100%. He was looking for that, just that one little detail that might make him be a little bit sharper in the next season. That's, again, law of diminishing returns. A whole lot of effort for just a little bit of ROI. But that little bit of ROI makes all the difference when you're competing against the top 100 people in the world at the thing that you do. Everybody follow what I'm saying here? So there is a limit to how much hard work can be done. Again, 
not to say don't work hard, but you got to find that sweet spot. And once you have found that, you can't always solve all your problems by simply working harder. Even that example I just gave you of Tom Brady, he wasn't just trying to work himself to the bone in that off-season training session that he had with that coach, that trainer. That trainer was just working with him on details. It wasn't him just pushing time to just you know, kill himself in the summer heat on the football field. It was looking at very tiny, minute details of his throwing motion and trying to figure out how to make it better, sharper, more crisp. It wasn't just a hard work thing because he could hire a drill sergeant to teach him how to work hard. He was going to someone who could find the detail that would make the most difference. So hard work is not the solution to your problems. Oftentimes, folks, when you've already done the baseline level of effort. Now, some of you, this is actually for everybody listening here. This is where you have to let your skill of discernment come into play or you can come work with someone like me and work on your game university is that work on your game university.com and get clear as to what side of this line you're on. Are you on the side of the line where you actually do need to do more hard work because you simply haven't done enough yet? Or are you on the side of the line where you've done enough hard work that hard work is no longer the answer to your challenge and you just need a, maybe a different approach, a different strategy, ask yourself a better question. But if you get this wrong, as far if your discernment is off and you think the answer is let me work harder, but the answer is actually, you're working hard on the wrong thing, well, then you're going to mess yourself up because you have an inaccurate formula. So you can't keep solving problems by hard work, depending on where you're at. All right, there's an asterisk to that. So the goal of this point should not always be to work more. The goal is to be more effective in your work, and effective means what produces the actual results. And if you don't know the answer to that, get help. This is the reason why we have work on your game university.com. That's the place where you can work with me and you can get help and know, okay, should I keep working hard on this or am I just taking a complete wrong approach here? There was someone who texted me just yesterday. He's a guy who's uh, been in our university, been in our program. He was texting me, asking me this exact question because I was asking him what he was doing at the moment because he was telling me about some career changes he was making. And he asked the question, he said, do I have the right approach right now? Is what I'm doing actually the right direction that I should be taking things? That's the kind of question that you should be asked. It's a great question that he asked. These are the kind of questions that you want to ask someone who can see things and knows things that maybe you don't know or maybe has insights that you don't have. And this is the reason why coaching programs are valuable. So you're not just guessing and going off of your own uh, intuition when your own intuition may be insufficient to help you see what needs to be seen. Because remember, folks, well, first of all, let me back up. The goal at, at some point is not to just keep working hard, it's to find the effectiveness and be more discerning about which work you are doing. So it's not just about the work, it's about which work. Because you can only stretch the time, but so far when it comes to effort. Your new question should become, how can you get more effective at producing this outcome in the time in which you have? That's a really good question. That's the key, rather than always looking to accumulate more effort. Because accumulating effort, again, there's there's a diminishing return to that because there's only so much effort you can give. Number three, point number three. Today's topic, once again, is inescapable truths. Number three, as a general rule, people are who they are and they do not change. As a general rule, people are who they are and they generally don't change. I've done entire episodes on the concept of people not changing and I've explained this concept extensively, why people don't change. The only change most people undergo in life is that they get older and they get more hardened in the beliefs that they already have, and they get better at explaining and rationalizing the beliefs that they are unwilling to change or have challenged. That's usually the only change that people make, is to get better at telling themselves the same story, and they get better at defending that story if anyone were to dare to challenge that story. So people will have, even when they have beliefs, that are demonstrably not serving them. It is clear that believing things this way and looking at things this way is not helping that person. And they can see that if you hold the mirror up to them and they're willing to listen. They will maybe even come to the point of admitting it and they still won't change. How many of you have had this kind of conversation with someone when you clearly showed them you, they were willing to listen to you and talk to you long enough that you were able to show them that the beliefs that they continue to hold on to are clearly not working without a shadow of a doubt. It was obvious to you and to them that their beliefs are not serving them yet, even after they admitted that what you showed them was true, they went right back mentally to think in the same way that they wanted to think. How many of you have had that happen? Good, all of you have had it happen. Which means a few things. Number one, this is human nature because all of us have had this experience, so don't think that there's something wrong with you 
or something wrong with the person you were talking to because humans just do this is what human beings do. And number two, you should not waste your resources trying to change a person's mind who clearly does not want their mind to be changed. That's what I'm, I want you to get out of this. Here, people rarely change their deeply ingrained habits, even when you show them that their deeply ingrained habits are not helping, they will still not change. If anything, people get stronger and stronger in defending their habits, not more open to changing them, regardless of what you are able to logically and quote unquote factually explain to them. All this is summed up in one concept, folks. If you want to take one thing from this third point, stop trying to change people. All right? It is an exercise in futility. It's a bad business to be in. Don't try to change anyone. Instead, if you're looking for a certain type of person, look for someone who is already in a certain frame of mind and who is open to or who is open to becoming a certain type of person and work with them instead. Work with the people who are already converted. In other words, what we call that is preaching to the choir. I talked about this in episode number 1507. Preaching to the choir means talk to the people who are actually coming to church. Don't talk to the people who are standing on a corner outside of the church. They can clearly see the church, but they don't want to go inside. Don't go preach to them because they don't want to hear your message. If they did, they would be in the church instead of outside. Preach to the people who came to church, all right, which is the choir. So work with people who already are converted. If you want to fight the good fight of trying to get people to change their minds and change their way of thinking, I mean, we do need those people. We call them community service and community activists and social workers. Or if you want to be one of those, have at it. All right, I'm not getting in that business. And I generally don't work with people who are in those businesses. I tell people to work with people who are already looking to go in the direction that you're going. There are enough of them for you to have a market and for you to have a business. Trying to change people's minds is not a good business to be in. Okay, work with the converted. So trying to change someone from how they are to something different is, again, exercise in futility. It will only frustrate you and it will anger the other person and nobody wins. They don't get anything. You don't get anything. Nobody wins. All that, got, all that happened was time got lost. And time is your most valuable resource. Do not waste it trying to change somebody's mind. Uh, people don't change their minds. They, just, they don't. You can set an example. They have to change on their own. You will never change a person by arguing with them, ever. Let's recap today's class, which is inescapable truths. Again, these apply in every aspect of life, no matter who you are, where you are, your age, gender, uh, sexual orientation, where you're from, what you're doing, or where you're trying to go. These always apply to everybody. Point number one, you cannot get without giving. This is the law of the universe. Whatever you get, you must give in uh, at least a you must give in some uh, consummate amount that makes sense for what you are receiving. Uh, the law of receiving is you must give in the amount in which you wish to receive. And often you will receive back in an amount that is multiplied from how you gave. But you have to give in the spirit of giving, not give in the spirit of I'm just giving because I'm going to see what I'm going to get back. Point number two, biology demands that the mind and body rest. Is it possible to live as a human being without resting the mind and body? This means you cannot just keep doubling and tripling down on effort. There is a limit to how much effort you can give. And at one point, you get to the law of diminishing returns, meaning more effort does not produce an equal amount of results. You have to find that sweet spot and stop banging your head against a stone wall to achieve your goals. Maybe you just need a different approach and a better strategy for your effort. Number three, as a general rule, people are who they are and they do not change. Do not waste your, re your resources trying to change another person and don't waste their resources trying to change them because if they wanted to change, well, guess what? They wouldn't be who they are. They'd be somebody different. Most people don't want to change. If you want to work with people who are a certain way, don't just try to change the people around you to be that way. Go find the people who are that way and they're much easier to work with because they're already on the same wavelength as you. You don't have to put any resources into making them think a certain way because they're already thinking that way. Wouldn't that be easier? Of course it is. With all that said, make sure you text me to see in my community. My number's down below in the description. Also, work on your game university.com. That's the place I'll do all my coaching. If you would like to work with me directly, have me as your direct coach, get access to all our trainings, get access to our live coaching calls, be in our uh, entrepreneur community group conversation that is happening even outside of our coaching calls, and get our two physical mailings that we send every month, amongst a bunch of other things. You can see all of this, all the details in writing, and get started at work on your game university.com. Work on your game. Dre, all.